And let me say again, I did not get a chance to publicly, uh, well, I acknowledge you last week, but our president was not able to be here last week. Will we please clap our hands and give God praise for our president, Dr. Lester Newman. Well, this morning, I'm excited. I'm, not, I'm going to get out the way in just a minute, but listen, I'm going to go ahead and say this because I'm not going to get to introduce her this morning, but I'm excited this morning because the preacher is here this morning. What you looking over your shoulder for? Y'all who have not heard Dr. Glennell Pruitt, Dr. Hester going to come after a while and she's going to introduce her, but I'm so excited. Students, listen to me. Um, we try to make sure that we bring uh, speakers and preachers and other, other personalities who will be a blessing to your life and to learn so that you can also learn something. Uh, please take this serious. Listen to them. Make sure that you engage in them. And even if it's not your faith tradition, see what God says to you through that particular person that's going to be speaking. Today I'm excited. Miss Jarvis Alexis Hodge is going to come and read our scripture. Then Mr. Jarvis, Miss, Mr. Kimball Mitchell will come and uh, lead us in prayer. After which, um, our musical selection will be by the Jarvis Christian University Choir under the direction of Mr. Bruce Alvin Thompson. Give God praise as they we come. Good morning. The scripture I'll be reading is Psalm 23, verses 1 through 6. Do y'all need a second? Okay. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths in his, for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. May you please bite your head for a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I just want to first say thank you. Thank you for waking each and every one of, us, one of us up this morning, dear Lord, and starting us on our way. Dear Lord, continue to bless each and every one of us every day that we go in and out onto the campus to receive our lessons. Dear Lord, also bless someone to receive something out of this message today to go along with them along their way. And dear Lord, I just want to thank you for everyone here this morning and bless those ones who wanted to be here but couldn't. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
Come on, let's give it up again for our choir. Come on. Now, now can y'all do something for me? Vladimir, stand up right quick, bud. Stand up. Y'all give it up for Vladimir. That's one of our new international students. A classically trained pianist who is learning to play, learning to play gospel music. And, and man, let me tell y'all, I sit down in my office and all day long when he's not in class. All I hear is him up here just serenading. I thank God for him. But we want to celebrate you, man, for, for coming to this campus. Amen. All right, I got a, I got a few announcements I need to make, and um, I want I want to run through these just as quickly as I possibly can. First and foremost, the safe spaces. Those of you who desire a safe space to have critical conversations will be today, uh, September the sixth at four p.m. in the People Dixon Conference Room. Please make sure that you are there. That is actually led by Miss Erin Colmer. And our counselor, our counselor, Dr. Keisha James, will be there with us today. And so I want to ask that if you, are, if you are willing, would you please make sure that you make yourself available for that today. It doesn't matter your particular issue. Let's go somewhere where we can talk about it in a safe space. Ladies and gentlemen, FYE classes will meet this Thursday at 11 a.m., but, but you will meet here in the Smith Howard Chapel. Let me say it again. FYE will meet Thursday at 11 a.m. However, it will meet here in the Smith Tower Chapel. Now, I've been around us a long time, Dr. Newman, so I know you have to say it three times before we really heard it. So let me say it again. Students, FYE is not canceled this Thursday. It, it's not. Even though there will be something else going on in the mic, it's not canceled this Thursday. You're to meet where? You're to meet where? All right. So be here in the chapel this Thursday at 11 o'clock. All right. Uh, if you need help with your writing as we are beginning the semester, please contact Ms. Joyce Holt in the SSS lab. For those who don't know where the SSS lab is, it's the little building that sits right here adjacent to uh, this building. Uh, Ms. Holt's office is, when you go through the front door, go all the way down the hall to the back, and it's the second door from the end, the third door from the end. Uh, Dr. Jones is here, Dr. Ms. Nuong is here, and then Dr. Ms. Holt is right there. So make sure that you uh, make yourself available to that. NABA National Association of Black Accountants meeting will be this Thursday, September the 8th, uh, 2022 at 12 noon in S41. Student Minister Association uh, will have the worship service tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. Uh, there will be word and worship. Last week, Mr. Blake Johnson absolutely blessed us as he talked about hate not having any hold over us. And so we want to encourage you to come and be a part of that after the service on tomorrow evening. Um, those persons who are interested in SMA, and let me tell you what I mean. If you are a musician and you want to use that talent here, if you are a singer and you want to use that talent here, outside of the choir, outside of the choir, then please know that we have a place that you can uh, use those gifts, those talents, even if you are a praise dancer. Kimball is, is a wonderful praise dancer. Um, Shariah is a wonderful praise dancer. If you, if you have those talents and you want to do that, please make sure that you meet with Mr. Eric Linson and Miss Kim Harmon tomorrow right after our worship service. Join the JCU Art Club. Um, which is led by Mr. Dr. J uh, Judson. Please contact him for more information. September the 6th uh, today uh, at 2 p.m. there will be a, a JCU Creative Writing Club interest meeting at 2 p.m. today in S41. Uh, let's see here. Jarvis, Jarvis International Culinary Club will meet Thursday, September the 8th at 2 p.m. also in S41. Students, remember this. You are, you are mandatory community service hours. All students' uh, community service hours are required for graduation, so make sure uh, that you contact Ms. Pettis uh, so that you can fulfill your obligation. Those of you who have disabilities and need disability support services, accommodations, please contact Ms. Henson, who's our ADA coordinator. She is also located in the SSS building. And then uh, two announcements from me. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this Thursday at 7.30 p.m. right here in the Smith Howard Chapel, we will be teaching, continuing our series on connecting and reconnecting with God. We're going to talk about experiencing God, the process, and the proof. The challenge is sometimes, real God is with us, but we can't see him. Sometimes God is there, 
because the process is so difficult that it makes it obscures God and make it look like God is not there. But if we go through the process and look for the proof, then we'll recognize when God is active. And then this Sunday morning at 11 a.m., I'm going to preach a message titled Guarantees from the God Who Heals. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, it is my honor to introduce our Assistant Vice President for Academic Affairs, Dr. Cynthia Hester, who will come now and introduce our speaker for this morning. President, to President Newman, students, faculty, staff, and friends of Jarvis, I am pleased to introduce our speaker today, our own Dr. Glenel M. Lee Pruitt, who has enjoyed over 20 years of university management experience chronicled by achievements in both administration and academic capacities. She currently serves as the Provost and Vice President of Academic Affairs here at the Jarvis Christian University, which she has held for 10 years. The Reverend Dr. Glenell M. Lee Pruitt has also been in pastoral ministry for 20 years and currently serves as the pastor of St. Matthew AME Church in Shreveport, Louisiana. Her education includes a Bachelor of Social Work degree from Jackson State University, a Master's of Social Work from Temple University. She also holds a Master of Divinity degree from Payne Theological Seminary and her Ph.D. degree in social work, as she would call it, the Jackson State University. She is the proud mother of one beautiful daughter, Gwendolyn Lee, and one beautiful granddaughter, Jalen Mariah. An active member of the Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, a mentor, and spiritual advisor to many, my colleague, my Sarah, my boss, the Reverend Dr. Glenell M. Lee Pruitt. Pray for her as she brings to us a word from the Lord. After the choir, the next person you will hear will be none other than Dr. Pruitt. Thank you.
why don't we give the choir another round of applause. <laughs> to Dr. Newman, our president, and to my colleagues who are members of the president's cabinet and students, faculty, staff, alumni, friends of Jarvis Christian Co University, to our chaplain, and thank you, Dr. Hester, for that um, introduction. Will you pray with me? We come now, holy God, in the midst of these, your people, to proclaim, proclaim a word. We ask that now, in this preaching moment, that you would be with us that your word would go forth and not return void until it has accomplished those things that it has already been predestined to accomplish. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope and let my will be lost. Speak, Lord, for your servant heareth. And now let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. For you are, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I'd like to thank Mrs. I know you can you see me, Mrs. Jarvis, Miss Jarvis Christian University Horge for Miss Horge for reading. Uh, the scripture for me on this morning, the 23rd number of Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Verse 6 says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I'd like to preach for the few moments that I have this morning from the topic, Blessed Assurance. Blessed assurance. Our focus verse this morning is the very last in one of the most well-known songs in the Bible. It brings to a climax one of the most recited scriptures and is said to be one of the 50 best known scriptures in the Bible. Most of us learned this scripture along with the Lord's Prayer as a child. It is a scripture that seems to cover every aspect of a believer's life and the challenges that come along with living. It is one that is recited during funerals as comfort to, be, to the bereaved and one that is used as encouragement for those who are facing troubling times. It is a passage of scripture that gives us a blessed assurance. There are so many rich nuggets in Psalm 23. It is a testimony of David's and one that is described by some as the psalm of the divine shepherd. We see the psalmist sharing with us what some call the very character of God. We see the personal relationship that the psalmist have with God as he calls the Lord God 
my shepherd. We see the provider God in the statement, uh, I shall uh, not want. We see a God who cares about our rest in the statement, uh, he makes me lie down uh, in green pastures. We see a God who cares about our wellness in the statement, he leads me beside still waters. We see a God who heals us in places that the doctor cannot write a prescription in the statement, he restores uh, my soul. We see a God who is our guide in the statement. He leads me in the right paths for his namesake. We see a God who allows us to walk in difficult places that increases our faith and dependency on him in the statement, even though I walk through the darkest valley. We see a God who provides us comfort in those difficult places. I will fear no evil. We see a God who is very present in every situation. For you uh, are with me. We see a God who chastened those he loves. Your rod and your staff, uh, they comfort me. Uh, we see a God who provides us strength when others are against us. Uh, you prepare a table before me in the presence uh, of my enemies. Uh, we see a God who prepares us for worship and service to him. He anoints uh, my head uh, with oil. Uh, we see a God who gives us not just what we need, but sometimes what we want. Uh, my cup uh, runneth over. We see the very character of God in these first five verses. We see the Lord God being everything that we need in every situation that we have to face in this life. We have in these first five verses uh, a blessed uh, assurance. But even more assurance do we see in the sixth verse. The psalmist used the word surely. Surely, assuredly, certainly, definitely, inevitably, undoubtedly, no matter what I'm going through or what I've gone through or what I will go through, I have the blessed assurance that goodness and mercy will follow me, will accompany me, will go with me all the days of my life. Someone wrote when David said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life that he was giving human-like qualities to abstract blessings of the Lord. A paraphrase might be, because you, Lord, are good and pleasing and valuable, and because you love me so faithfully, I am certain you will be with me all of my life. The psalmist is saying, I, I may have some difficult times. I, I may have some scary situations. I may have some enemies that wish me bad. The Lord may even have to correct me every now and then. But even with all that I go through, I have the blessed assurance of the constant companions of goodness and mercy being with me all the days of my life. Now, let me be clear, unless somebody listening may think that having goodness and mercy with you all the days of your life means you won't have any trouble. I hate to bust your bubble or pop your balloon, but that is not what that means. Having goodness and mercy does not stop us from getting sick. But goodness and mercy gives us the assurance that when we are sick, we can call on the name of Jesus. And he has the power to heal us and make us whole. Having goodness and mercy does not stop our loved ones from dying. But goodness and mercy help us to continue on after they are gone, trusting in the Lord. Having goodness and mercy does not stop our children from getting in trouble. But goodness and mercy gives us the strength to keep praying and keep hoping in the power of Jesus for our children. Having goodness and mercy does not stop us from facing forces that want us to be destroyed, but goodness and mercy help us stare down those forces and tell them that the devil is a lie and greater is the Holy Spirit that lives in me than anyone that lives uh, in the world. Uh, having goodness and mercy does not stop us from sometimes having challenges with our faith, but goodness and mercy reminds us that if the Lord has done it before, he sure enough can do it again. Having goodness and mercy does not stop us from making mistakes, but goodness and mercy grants us grace instead of the justice that we deserve. Anybody grateful this morning for goodness and mercy? 
good times, bad times, ups, downs, ins, out, pain, suffering, loss, hopelessness, helplessness, rights, wrong, no money, little money, more money. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. My God, what a blessed uh, assurance. You see, when I hear these words, they give me hope, and I hope that they give you hope as well. Some of you right now are going through something. You, you are wondering what you are going to do. You are worried about how things are going to turn out. You don't know whether to turn to your left or to your right. You don't know whether to look up or look down or look around. You want to cry, and there are no more tears. You want to scream, and there is no more sound. You want to fight, but all your fight is gone. You want to give up, but you don't even have the energy to do that. But I have good news for you. With all of what you're going through and what is going on, you have the constant companion of goodness and mercy in the presence of the Holy Spirit that continues to be with you. You want to know how you made it? Goodness and mercy. You want to know why you haven't given up? Goodness and mercy. You want to know why you haven't lost your freaking mind? Goodness and mercy. You want to know why you're still moving forward when standing still feels better? Goodness and mercy. You want to know why you're still here? Goodness and mercy. The presence of the Lord God in the person of the Holy Spirit provides goodness and mercy that props us up, lifts us up, keeps us up, sustains us, maintains us through it all. And that's a blessed assurance. The psalmist in Psalms 106.1 says, oh, give thanks to the Lord for his good, for his mercy endures forever. Psalm 107.1 says, oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. For his mercy endures forever. Surely, goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. The steadfast mercy, the love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I want to say to you, my brothers and sisters, you're here this morning because you got some new mercies. You're here this morning because goodness and mercy are with you. I have some good news. You have the blessed assurance that you have the constant companion of the Holy Spirit with you and that you are constantly in good company with goodness and mercy that have made a commitment to be with you all the days of your life. Even when you feel alone, you are not alone. They are hanging out with you, blocking some stuff that was meant to kill you, blocking some stuff that was meant to take you out of here. Blocking some people who want to get close to you for the wrong reasons. Blocking you from some things that will cause you to fall and fail. Blocking those thoughts that want to defeat you. Thanks be to God for the blessed assurance of goodness and mercy. Let, 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 let me help the students who are here today. Because those of us older than you, we have lived long enough and have made enough mistakes to understand goodness and mercy. We've been with enough of the wrong people. We've been to enough of the wrong places. We've said enough of the wrong things. We've done enough of the wrong things to know that we are still around because of the blessed assurance of having grace and mercy. But let me help my students so that you can understand. Justice is when you get what you deserve. Mercy it's when you get a reprieve. When you have missed the assignment because of your own doing and you appeal to your professor, justice is when they tell you that you had enough time to get the work done. But mercy is when they open up that portal to allow you to do your work. When you have registered students for your classes, but you have not completed your FAFSA. I have not seen Ms. Valentine in the business office. Justice is when we purge you from your classes because you did not handle your business. Mercy is when we allow you more time to get your business straight. When you have violated a rule in the residence hall and you sent to judicial, 
justice is when it is recommended that you be put off this campus for the violation. But mercy is when the committee decides to give you one more chance. Anybody here today grateful for goodness and mercy? Jesus acquiescing to the will of the Father in the garden is grace and mercy. Jesus going to Calvary for my sin and yours is grace and mercy. Jesus hanging on that old rugged cross from the sixth to the ninth hour is grace and mercy. Jesus getting up on the third day morning is grace and mercy. The good news for you this morning is that surely, surely, goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. 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 Let, let me get myself back together. Thank you! In 1873, Fanny Crosby wrote the lyrics to words written by Phoebe Knapp. The story goes that Miss Crosby was visiting Miss Knapp and she began playing a new melody on the piano. It is said that she asked her friend Miss Crosby, what did she think? And she replied, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. It, it is said to reflect Miss Crosby's walk of faith found in Philippians 121, for to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. What a blessed assurance we have every day that we are given the gift of life, the blessed assurance in knowing that we have the constant companion of the Lord Jesus in the person of the Holy Spirit that provides us goodness and mercy. Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation. Purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my, my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Just remember, my students, uh, that when trouble comes up against you, uh, remember when the enemy wants to attack you. Uh, remember that when it seems like you can't make it, uh, that you have some friends uh, that are always with you uh, through the presence of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and all you have to do is call them up. Uh, and all you have to say is, come on goodness uh, and come on mercy. I need you uh, to help me through. Come on. You have the blessed assurance of goodness and mercy. God bless you.
This is my story. This is my praising my Savior. Praising my all day long. If you know it, say it. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my, praising my. Can we do it again? This is my story. This is my, this is my song. Praising my Savior all day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior. This is my story. This is my song. I'm praising my Savior. All the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praise him all the day. All right. Glory to God. Glory to God. Can we clap our hands for Dr. Villanelli, please? <laughs> Mr. Thompson, if you don't mind, if you just play just a little bit more of that. I want to. Uh, I'm not good on time, Lord. I swear. I want you to bow your heads with me for just a moment. Um, I want to pray this morning for students because sometimes, y'all please don't play right now. Even if, you, even if you don't understand what's going on, please don't play right now. Um, somebody this morning needed to hear that because you know what you smoked, what you drank, what you did, you should have died. But goodness and mercy walks with you all the days of your life. So I want to pray. I want to pray this morning. This is personal. Because my own son has compromise his own mind and life. But goodness and mercy. So if you're here today, I want to do this just like this. Your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed. I'm looking, nobody else is. But if you're here today and you say, Pastor, this is where I am. Nobody knows the way I'm really feeling. Feeling like I'm by myself feeling like I'm just not even so sure that I wanted to get up this morning. 
and I need to know that God is with me. Tired of wondering, tired of trying to figure it out, trying to, trying to make, tired of trying to make it by myself. Your head's about, your eyes are closed, but if you're here today and you say, I heard this preacher say that God prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemy. If that's you today and you say, Pastor, today I need to know that God is with me. I just need you to slip your hand up and you can put it back down. That's all. Just slip your hand up and put it back down. I see you. 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 Come on. We're going to pray. God, you are the great shepherd and you're always with us. The problem is sometimes though you're with us, we don't sense you. Though you're with us, we don't feel you. And so it leaves us feeling a void. So what we do is we go and we try to fill that void with a whole lot of other things. But today, in the name of Jesus, I pray now, Spirit of the living God, somebody sitting in this place who raised their hand, they need to feel your presence. So God, would you reveal yourself to them? In fact, give them a flashback. Show them those times when it should have went the other way, but goodness and mercy. Show them those times when it should not have worked out, but goodness and mercy. Show them that even right now, the reason they still are living is because of goodness and mercy. Help us, oh God, so that we not quit, so that we not faint. And for this, we're going to give you praise. And for this, we're going to give you glory. Because you deserve it in Jesus' name. And everybody who agreed, would you please say amen. Come on, one more time. Clap your hands and give God praise for the preacher. Doc, y'all can do better than that. Give it up for God through Dr. Glenel Pruitt. Come on, y'all. Clap your hands and praise God today. We thanks be to Thanks and praise be to God. We're going to get ready to go down from this place, but I do need to uh, make one announcement that I, that I overlooked. Uh, this comes from Mr. Hampton. The pre-alumni council meeting uh, will be today, September the 6th at 6 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall of Smith Howard Chapel. So if you're interested in the pre-alumni council, please make sure that you meet with Mr. Hampton today at 6 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall of the Smith Howard Chapel. Have you not been blessed this morning? Come on. You've been blessed this morning. Well, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I'm so grateful to God as Mr. Dr. Lee in place. Would you please stand with me as we sing together our alma mater, and then we'll prepare to go down from this place. Please don't talk during the singing of the alma mater. J.C. And now the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord lift up the light of God's countenance upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord grant you God's peace. May goodness and mercy go with you every step of your journey. Amen.